Well, hello, welcome again to a reading through of Ephesians, and I got up to the beginning of chapter 2. Kai humas ontas ne krus tois paraptomas in kai tais hamatiais humon. And I'll just pause there because it's another long sentence. Now, this particular uh, beginning of what's called chapter 2. Uh, is rather strange. We've had a full stop up here and we're going to get another full or semicolon down here and there's no main verb governing this. It's as though the thought patterns in the writer's mind begin here and then he goes off on tangents and never really finishes the sentence properly and then brings, restates the same ideas with a finite verb but not till verse uh, verse five, which is quite a way away. So it's uh, it's a bit of a uh, grammatical uh, grammatically odd here. That there's no main verb. It just simply says, "And you being necrus dead, tois para in dative plural from para a word another word for sins or transgressions. It's connected with the verb of falling. So fallings, failings, that sort of thing. So you being dead in your sins, or failings perhaps, and in your sins, uh, en heis, in which, and so that must be agreeing back with the hamatias, in which once uh, peripatesate, from peripatio, you walked, literally, you conducted yourself, it's that um, that septuagintalism where that verb peripatio is used in the sense of to conduct your life so in which once you walked according to the now we get this very strange expression Iona to Cosmo Tutu and I'll leave the commentators to discuss it in detail it uh, depends, all depends on how one renders this Iona the expression itself is very close to Gnostic thought so some people deny that completely. Some scholars say, well, this is sort of pre-Gnostic. It's, um, it's somewhere between Paulinism and Gnosticism. And others think it may be a Gnostic expression itself. It's all depending on this word Iona. In classical Greek, Ion means, can mean life. Uh, here it tends then to mean a period of time. And others thought of this I own as a kind of creator god uh, who was sometimes identified with the devil. Uh, anyway, I leave the commentators to debate this. It does, to me, look very uh, Gnostic, or at least close to Gnosticism. So it's literally according to the, well, the age of this cosmos, of this world and uh, people have translated it in various different ways and paraphrased it. Uh, others translate it, uh, it, it, it uh, in classical Greek it can have the sense of life, but never has that in classical Greek, in, in New Testament Greek. So it may mean the spirit of the age, somehow some people translate it as uh, its very odd expression. And an even order is this one, kataton akontates exousias to eros, uh, according to the ruler of the authority of the air. So again, who is this ruler of the authority of the air? Obviously has to be a negative a meaning here, and it's not clear who this is referring to. Again, some people take this as referring to Satan. Um, some people see it as the spirit of the age. They're using the word air in, and it is our cognate with our word air, of course. Um, they're using it sometime, sometimes perhaps in a more generic sense of um, just the physical air, but uh, a s sort of spiritual realm. Um, anyway, again, I'll leave the commentators to debate this at length. So just to uh, do this here. So in which all once you used to walk, so you walked, aorist, according to the spirit of this age, perhaps according to the ruler of the authority of the air, and of the spirit, and I think we have to supply um, kata here again, of the spirit, the one operating now, 
in probably among tois huios teis apetheus, among the sons of disobedience. It's alpha privative plus the patho root to in the middle sense of to obey. So this is an abstract noun, first to clench and feminine. So of the spirit which is now operating, this is the energio, it's a dative participle here, among the sons of disobedience. This is a very Semitic expression here. En hois kai humes. Now I've got a pause here. The first part of the sentence, as you see, is never really completed. So among whom also humes pantes anastrafemen poti entais epithumias ais te sarcos hemon. I've got to go to a new page there in a second. So, among whom also all of us, this is from uh, Anastrepho, to conduct oneself. It means it has the sense of to turn this way and that, so to conduct oneself. So, we conducted ourselves potty once, and it keeps using this potty that all this happened in the past as opposed to what's happening now. So, in among whom also we, all of us ourselves con, um, conducted ourselves once uh, in the desires of our flesh, tes sarcos hemon, and we then have, uh, let's get this straightened here, poiuntes ta thelemata. Uh, so, it's literally. Um, Making the will, in other words, doing really, um, so acting in accordance with the the wills, it's plural, thalema, perhaps the intentions, tes sarcos of the flesh and tone dianoia. Dianoia is thought of our flesh and thoughts. So it's sort of something like acting in accordance with the with the intentions of the flesh and the or the desires of the flesh and the thoughts kai amatha that is the past tense of amy uh, you get a men and you get a metha get various forms of this a metha in new testament greek is probably the more common i think you get a main no sorry that's first person a metha a a men i think you get as well so, and we were, and we get this very difficult expression here, again the commentators spend a while on this one, I think it must mean something like, we were children of wrath, fuse by nature. We were children of wrath, or of anger, that is of God's anger, fuse by our very nature. As also, hoi loipoi, as also everyone else, the rest, the remaining, the rest of mankind. Hodithios plusios own in elea, dia ten polen agapen autu hen agapesen hemas. Kai ontas hemas necrus tois parapetomasin sun edzo poesen to Christo. And I'll just pause it there because we then have a break. But God being plusios rich or wealthy. So rich in elea, this is the dative from eleos, which is a third declension neuter noun, and this is just the dative here. Uh, you know the you know the verb eleo to have mercy. This is the noun, third declension neuter eleos. So God being wealthy in or rich in mercy through. Uh, uh, his much love, so on, or perhaps I should say, no, on account of his much love, the much love of him, the love which, in resp or with which he loved us. So the love which he loved us, literally. So something like on on account of the great love the abundance of love, of his love perhaps, with which he loved us. Kai ontas hemas necrus tois parapetomasin. Now he comes back and uh, really repeats what he had at the beginning. In fact, the words are almost the same. We've had humas ontas necrus 
Tois Parapotomacy back in verse 1, and now we get Ontas Hemas, just a reverse of order, Necrus Tois Parapotomas. So this is what he was really about to say at the beginning, but then got off the track. And so he repeats it here. So us being, so uh, he has made alive us being dead by our sins. He has made us alive along with Christ. To Christo. Now we're going to get lots of these verbs. He's very fond of using verbs with sun in the next this chapter, as we'll see. Lots of these suns together with. So, uh, he has made us alive along with Christ. Us who were being dead by our uh, transgressions, the parapetoma sin. And then we get a break here. The editor's put a dash because it's sort of a, it's a uh, parenthesis here. Karate es desert zoimenoi. So um, you, now this is a periphrastic perfect. Uh, so you use the verb to be plus the participle. So this is the third person plural. Or no, sorry, I should say second, second person plural. You have been saved by grace. And we get the perfect uh, passive here from Sozo. Sometimes you get it with the iota subscript, and sometimes you don't. The original, the original form of this is, comes from a root soos, and then you get the sozo, and then sometimes you get the little iota appears in here as it does here. And with more of these sun verbs, and sun agerin kai sun ekathisen en tois uraniois en Christo Jesu. Hina en doxetai en tois iosin tois epicomenois to hupabalon plutos tes caritas autu en cretote ti f hemas en Christo Jesu. Again, always pay attention to the order in which you get the names here. This time it's Christos and Jesus second. Sometimes it's the other way around, as we saw back in chapter 117. And we see the same order down here in verse 10. So, uh, and he has raised us, understood, with him. And he has seated, understand, us with him. In the heavenly places, epiranioi, this is actually an adjective, but you've got to supply topois or something. In the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Hina endeksetai, subjunctive from endeknumi. Uh, and this is in the middle here. It's not, not generally put into the middle in classical Greek, but it is in New Testament Greek. It means to show literally, or perhaps to prove, probably to show here, perhaps to demonstrate. So in order that he might perhaps demonstrate might be good, just as a little interesting point, the verb dake numi is to point or to show, and it's actually the, it's the same Indo-European root as our word teach. So teaching is literally pointing in pointing you in the right direction is what teaching is about. Uh, so th this is probably has that sense of to prove or to show, perhaps to demonstrate. So in order that he might demonstrate, now this is another difficult expression here. It's in the ages, the ones coming after. So whatever that means, in the coming ages, in the coming periods of time, if that's what it means, it could also mean among those ions that are coming, if you want to take it in a Gnostic sense. Uh, and indeed, a Gnostic reading this would have immediately reacted to this, I would think. Anyway, I'll just do it literally. So in order that he might demonstrate in the ages, the ones coming. To Hoopa Ballon, this is a neuter participle, present neuter participle here from Hoopa Ballo, the exceeding. 
Uh, we get the word hyperbola from this, of course, it's to throw something beyond this literal sense of it, so it has comes to mean exceeding. So the exceeding Plutos richness or wealth of his grace, from, generally from Karos, in Christotete, a dative here uh, from Christotes, goodness. So in in the in the good so of his grace in his goodness f hem us. Well, this must mean something like towards us in our direction towards us in Christ Jesus. Again, notice the order. Uh, tega. And again, we get this periphrastic uh, perfect passive here. For you are saved by grace through faith. Kaituto uk ex humon the utodoron. And this is not from you. Uh, the gift, understand, is from God. So it's, an, I think, an ablatival um, genitive here. So the gift is from God, or perhaps it is the gift of God. Perfectly good translation as well. Uk ex ergon hina metis kaukesetai, not as a result of works, in lest anyone kaukesetai from kaukatmai, to boast, lest anyone might boast, Autuga esmin poi ema, ktistentes en Christo Jesu epi ergois agathois hois pro etemoima sinhothios, hina en autois peri patesomen. Uh, for we are, now poi ema is it's an abstract noun, third declension neuter, formed from the verb poio, of course. So it's a creation, something made. So for you are his creation, perhaps. You are the thing made by him. Katisthentes, aorist passive from Katisda, having been founded uh, in Christ Jesus. Epi, uh, it's almost having been created in Christ Jesus. Epi ergois agathois, for good works. Um, and then the this has been a relative has been attracted into the dative by attraction. It would just normally be ha, I think. Yep. Uh, after the ergois. So for good works which God pro a uh, a toimasin from pro etoimazdo to prepare beforehand with the pro which God prepared beforehand hina in autois peripate somen in order that we might walk in them, that is, in the good works. Peripatio in the sense of conduct ourselves, live our lives in them. And that is the first part of chapter 2.